What's up guys? Welcome back. Sorry about ending that last episode a little early. Um, that voicemail was literally just a scam call and that's weird because normally they don't leave voicemails but that one did. So that's interesting. But uh, I'm not calling them back. They can kiss my ass. Because anything like that shit that they're talking about is always mailed to you on paper. So just you know if you ever get a scam call that's like fishy like that just know that most of the times it's fake because usually you'll get something in the mail about stuff like that um i'm not going to get into the details but that's pretty much what it what you'd get like legal stuff you know there's always a paper trail but um anyways welcome back I uh, skipped over the last line. I think I... Can I look at it anywhere? Is there a log? Text panel. Nope, that's not it. Autoplay, quick save, text panel, ba -ba -doo -ba -doo. There's no log. Okay. Well. I think he was thinking about Sharon. I think all he said was he was thinking about Sharon and the... Uh, or the android that looked like her. If I went to the last place I had seen Sharon alive, then maybe I could piece everything together. I went to the beach early in the morning with that idea in mind, but nothing special happened. Today was a day off, so I naturally wouldn't find her at school. You're... Just as I was about to give up and go home, I spotted that girl with her impressively long hair fluttering in the ocean breeze and froze in my tracks. Um... Damn. Damn. FBI, open up! <laughs> the girl turned around and stared at me. Our eyes met for but a few moments. No, an even longer time may have passed. Oni-chan. What did you just... Oni-chan! It is you, isn't it, Oni-chan? Yeah. The girl called out to me like a pure innocent child. Do you remember me? Who are you? Are you Sharon? Yes. Sharon. Sharon, is that really you? Yes, I am. I'm your little sister, Shiron. How? My heart couldn't process this new and confusing situation. Being face to face with and talking to Sh Shiron. This should be a moving reunion, but my body wouldn't cooperate. I was cons considering heading home next. Is mom home right now? I'm pretty sure she is, but more importantly, let's go home together. Uh, why are you here, Sharon? Huh? You haven't heard? Did Sarah bring you here? Oh, morning, Shin. Good morning? Wait, no. Sarah, what's going on? Sounds like Kaori san didn't explain the situation to you. Figures. Were you surprised? Forget about surprised. I still wasn't entirely sure if any of this was real. I mean, Sharon had passed away. I knew you were my Oni-chan. The second I saw you, that has to be because we were siblings. We are siblings. Would you expect anything less? Right? I would expect nothing less from you, Sarah-chan. The way she spoke was a bit different, but her voice, her hair, all of it was the something. <laughs> Sorry, I clicked to make the sentence go faster and it just yeeted to the next line. But, uh, Sharon definitely would have looked something like this all grown up. But something felt different about her. 
I know. Sarah murmured as if she had perceived my misgivings. Sharon is... Yet yeah, isn't... Sharon. She's an android. An android? That makes sense. The gloomy feeling in my chest instantly vanished. What made me the most uncomfortable wasn't that she was an android, but that her eyesight was far better than Sharon's ever was. I created Sharon as a present for you. Sharon? Oh, her official name is actually Trino. Sharon Trino? For now. Let's get going. You don't mean to my place, do you? What about it? Don't just decide that for yourself. I'm not. I've already gotten permission. This is the first time hearing of it. Mom may know about all of this, but... Sharon, come along now. But be sure to drag your disobedient brother along with you while you're at it. Yes. Let's go, Oni-chan. Got... She practically dragged me home with strength more superhuman than I would have ever expected from a girl. The texture from her hand felt so very real. She didn't even remotely seem like an android. Hello. Wait, huh? you went out too, Shun? You knew about this, Mom? Yes, I, I suppose. Kaori-san has already been briefed of the situation. She's even met Sharon once before. The fact all of this had happened without my knowledge left me dazed. Namely, Sarah's return to school and her being involved in Sharon's action, creation. Don't blame smiggy san I was the one who suggested making it into a surprise for you. I wasn't really blaming her or anything. Um... Sharon had been standing around idly, fidgeting in the hallway, and came into the room at Mom's beckoning. I will be in your care again from today onward, is that right? Yeah, something like that. Don't tell me she's... She'll be living here together with you starting today. No, no, please, please wait a second. I quickly glanced at Mom, but she didn't look bothered by it at all. Oh shit, Ugh. Sorry, I'm mm, yawning and shit. It felt like I was the only one disturbed by this turn of events. You've interacted with a number of experimental androids in the past, right? This is just another experiment. However, this particular experiment is unlike any other, with a significant budget invested into it. No way. It was common for the families of RRC staff members to assist in field testing new Android models. Our household had participated in a number of said tests over time, so I'd adapted to that lifestyle. I get how easy it is for you to spring this on me without warning, but... All you have to do is live together. Yes. Uh... The girl had a sweet, innocent smile. What about you, Mom? Sharon had passed away, so I couldn't believe she would readily accept this girl to take her place. Mom should be just as upset as I was. Oh, man. I got a yawning montage going on, I guess. I understand how you feel, Shun. But if you take a moment to consider that we no we now have an android to help around the house and with everyday, everyday tasks, then it isn't such a big deal. I can do all of that, though. Besides, there are dedicated androids for that sort of thing. Oh my, have you ever actually taken the initiative to help me on your own? I guess not. What a lame argument. 
heard smiggy san is conducting the same research your dad used to work on where is our dad is he dead did you just never come home went out to buy some cigarettes buy some milk you know he just got lost uh, that's what it is he just got lost he forgot how to get home we moved you know he was like oh where'd they go you know so uh yeah that's why he's not here anymore i think hello darkness my old friend <laughs> that's why i want to help her out although it may take some time to get used to it wasn't a matter of getting used to it or not there are bigger issues at play here like the differences between humans and androids or the ethical implications shun i know you love sharon chan more than just as a sister but this is a dream come true for me it is yes it's my dream there's the part about living with sharon chan again but more than that i always wanted sharon chan to see the world but Sharon died a long time ago. She isn't with us anymore, and this android won't change that. I know, and that's largely me being selfish. If she can see and learn about all the things Sharon Chan couldn't, then my dream would surely come true. Also, it might help me to forgive myself, if only a little. Mom, my sister couldn't walk around as much as she wanted to due to her poor eyesight and tended to lag behind the other kids in her class. Mom had grieved time and time again, wishing she could have taken her place. I do feel guilty for not consulting you about this though, Shun. While I understood wanting it to be a surprise, this plan seemed to have been in the works for a while. There was no way Sarah could have possibly produced such an intricate android in such a short time. Somewhere in her heart, Mom had been trying to face Sharon for many years. Are, are you really okay with this, Mom? Yes! That's what I have decided. Her eyes were serious, as you can tell. <laughs> I had a negative outlook on the whole thing, wondering if my memories of Sharon would fade, or if I disliked this android simply because she looked like her. Mom was different, though. Boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. I could sense the strong resolve that came with being a researcher's wife in her. Fine. Thank you, Shun. Thank goodness. With Mom's approval, I gradually found myself overtaken with a sudden yet uncomfortable curiosity. When I recalled both the feel of her hand and the way she played the piano, Sharon seemed very human. Deep down, it was likely just a computer simulation. Still, I found myself wanting to talk to this girl who may well be a literal carbon copy of my sister. Your room hasn't changed a bit, Shun. Does it look like a kid's room or something? I didn't mean it like that. More than it, more that it has a nostalgic feel to it. In an effort to show her around the house, I brought Sharon to my room first. Mom had cleaned the house yesterday, so everything was largely ready for her to stay. Um, where is our bunk bed? I believe it was right here. We got rid of that bunk bed ages ago. You did? Hey, how do you know about that? I lived here until recently, so... Um... What are you talking about? This Sharon possesses the other Sharon's memory data. Her body may be a copy, but her thoughts aren't. So she's a different person entirely. Just think of her as an identical twin. I transplanted her memories, programmed thought processes based upon them, and ins inserted those into the Sharon prototype. Transplanted? How would you do that? I do believe you've undergone examinations at the RRC yourself, Sean. I thought all of the staff's family members did that. They do. But you and Sharon are different. Your memory data was retrieved periodically. 
How convenient. <laughs> it was indispensable to your father's research. I had no idea that was going on. It was hard to believe we had become test subjects like that without ever realizing it. Anyway, that would mean this. That would mean. <laughs> that would mean this android possessed artificial intelligence which learned from my sister's stored memories. Could we talk for a little bit? Sarah asks, then sent Sharon out into the hall. All robotic development thus far has been conducted with the intent of making machines which aid humans. For example, cleaning robots were designed with efficient cleaning in mind, but it wasn't essential for them to possess bipedal movement. It was enough as long as they could complete their primary objective. Even caregiving robots? Yes, their form avoids instilling a sense of fear or oppression in the elderly, but they were designed with safety and reliability as their top priority. However, Trino is different. She was developed with the intent of mimicking a human. As such, not only was it essential to make her physically resemble a human, she was also intentionally programmed to re reproduce a human's imperfect nature. Imperfect nature? You mean she can make mistakes too? Don't worry. She may be imperfect, but I set it up so that she could learn to compensate for it. My point being, it's possible Trino's thought processes could undergo massive changes, depending on what knowledge she've afforded from now on, or something like that. So like, adapted, adaptive AI, kinda. Like, she adapts to the environment, she adapts to her situation, stuff like that. So listen, Shun, I want you to treat Trino exactly like you would have treated Jerome. In doing so, I'll be able to confirm whether androids are truly beings capable of changing the world. It's easy for you to say. This is excessive, even for a request from Sarah. For starters, I hadn't fully accepted this entire situation yet. I chose you personally. I couldn't possibly entrust Trino, no, Sharon, to anyone else. Sharon will bring you happiness. It would be no exaggeration to say I created her for that exact purpose. If, if Sharon were just a helper robot, I would have immediately accepted her. However, this android looked and behaved like a real human. I found it difficult to accept her because I couldn't think of her as just a robot. Sarah, why did you do all of this? In order to set the, those days in motion once more, I don't mean that, um... I wasn't sure how to phrase my question. Was that really all she wanted? Every last bit of my research was so I could bring her back to life. There's only one being who can make your and my wish come true, and that is Sharon. My wish? A long time ago, you once asked me, why did Sharon have to die? If it were possible, I wish I could see her one more time. I'm gonna leave the video here, my guys. Thanks for watching. And peace.